Hi, it's Redheaded Riding Hood here. Red for short. I'm gonna read you William Barclay's Daily Celebration, September 28th. The Necessity of Beauty. Beauty in our day is not an optional extra, but a necessity. Beauty in words is necessary. There has been in the last 30 years, a radical change in preaching. So this was 1970s, so he's talking about like probably 1940 uh, to 1970, yeah. Preaching is no longer oratory, it is conversation. It's interesting. If the pulpit order exists at all nowadays, he is quite out of fashion, and instead we have the pulpit conversationalist. Now this has an attendant danger. Because of this new style, the preacher may think that he need not be nearly so detailed in his preparation as once he was. He may think that he need no longer carefully write out and prepare his sermons, Nothing could would be further from the truth. It is an old paradox that nothing has to be so carefully prepared as an effective impromptu. Preaching is like cooking. Two cooks can take precisely the same ingredients and out of them one can make a revolting mess and the other an appetizing delight. All preachers use the same material, usually the Bible, right? Out of it, one can make something which would bore a saint to tears, and another can make something which would rouse the most hardened cynic to electrified interest. The difference is entirely in the presentation. Yeah, you can also be very, very offensive with the Bible. Yeah, Bible. Thumpers. <laughs> no preacher can afford to neglect beauty of words except at his peril. Beauty in worship is necessary. No conscientious preacher will ever depend wholly on extemporary prayer. For he will remember that in the public worship of God, he is bringing to God not only his own prayers, but also the prayers of his people. And to do that, he must carefully prepare his prayers. And once he has prepared, only the finest language is good enough for the task of bringing the needs of the people to God. Beauty in surroundings is necessary. The drabness of so many churches is one of their greatest handicaps. It would be difficult to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness in many of our church buildings. There are bad churches, it's true. Some people have, don't like, don't think churches should be so elaborate. Some people think the opposite. We in the church ought to remember that we are living in a time which has perhaps even unconsciously realized the importance of beauty. It would be a sad thing if in a world which has rediscovered the importance of beauty, the church alone neglected it. There's some um, beautiful churches that I saw in, um, in England and in um, Italy. I didn't go, yeah, I didn't, I don't think I saw as many churches that's interesting. I don't think I went, I didn't um, go in any churches in Portugal, in Lisbon. I don't think there's as many churches there. But that's just something I just thought of now. But I just remember I didn't see. <laughs> I don't remember. I probably did, but I might just not remember. <laughs> That was last year in July. All right. Don't say that no one cares for you because I do and God does too. Don't forget to pray for Red because Red is praying for you. Bye.